All right, we are going to be replacing a gas stove with an induction one. And the problem with doing that is that you can't necessarily just swap them out because your gas stove is probably just plugged into a normal 120 volt outlet on probably a 15 amp breaker. These are just the normal plugs you have all over your house. And induction and electric ranges require more power than that. They are usually going to need a 240 volt plug on something like a 40 or 50 amp breaker so more similar to what you would plug a dryer into so in this video we are going to show you how we ran the new circuit and plug for a new induction stove with the usual caveat that that is how we did it it is not necessarily how you should do it the electrical codes and standards where you live may be different we have gotten comments on some previous videos for example about rewiring a light switch about how things are done differently in europe so this is for informational purposes to show you how we did it. It is not instructions for exactly how you should do it. Please check with a professional or your local codes before doing any of your own electrical work. Now in part one of what will likely be a two part video, we are first going to talk about running the wire from just above the breaker box through a unfinished part of the basement and then over through a finished part that has a drop ceiling until we get it directly below the stove where we're going to drill up into the kitchen. We may oscillate narrators a bit, bouncing back and forth in this video, because depending on what we remember to do a voiceover for while we were filming, so apologies for that. Uh, first, we are going to switch over and talk about the type of wire. So the type of wire we're using for the stove is uh, number 63, and to explain that, these larger wires here are 6 gauge, which is good for um, about 65 amps. We're only going to put it on a smaller breaker, a 50 amp breaker, which is sufficient for the new electric stove. And what the reason why it's called 6.3 is you have 6 gauge, 6 gauge, and a 6 gauge. So essentially two hot conductors and a neutral. And then you also have a number 10 gauge for a ground. So it's called 6.3 Romex. The Romex is the type of jacket. It's for indoor use, not using direct sunlight. It's not direct burial. So the type of jacket does matter for the application. Okay, that is it for the wire itself. Next, we are going to hear a little bit more about the hardware you need to attach the wire to the joists in your ceiling. These are PVC conduit straps, okay. two, two hole PVC conduit straps for half inch conduit. And they fit a little loose on there, but they'll do a good job holding the wire. And then another little pro tip, the screw size. They're number 12s by inch and a quarter. The reason I went with this size screw is because of the, the depth of the head. If it's nicely in your magnetic tip, it's, instead of being shallow, it's deeper and it stays uh, pretty fast. So it makes it easy to get it where you gotta go. The number 10 and the number nine screws are smaller and the head is not quite as deep. It's shallow and they fall out of the bit easier. All right, this next part is where we forgot to narrate while we were working, but the basic idea is you need to plan a path for your wire. Again, we were going through a finished part of the basement with a drop ceiling where we needed to move the tiles out of the way, and then an unfinished part with lots of other pipes and wires and stuff. So basically, plan the route and try not to make a headache for whoever might be working in the future. Don't leave things tangled or such that it would be very difficult to remove something if you need to in the future and make sure you leave enough wire on both ends that you can connect both to the panel box and to the ultimate outlet for the stove. You don't want to go and install all of these clips and then come back and find out that you're just a few inches short of reaching one location because that's going to be a pain. So use one of these clips with two screws. You don't have to do every single joist because this wire is pretty stiff, but you don't want it flopping around. So again, make sure the wire is secure. Leave yourself enough room on both ends to reach the panel box and the outlet. No, I don't know which side of the panel box I'm going to go in uh, until I take off the cover and see where there's more room available to go through a knockout. So I put my last or second to last strap here, and I'm either going to tuck into the box on this side, or I'll put another strap and then come down on this side. And in the next video, you'll see this with the cover off, and I'll show you how I installed this wire into the uh, circuits. Okay, that's it for video number one. Again, in the following video or two, next we are going to show actually running the wire into the panel box here and installing the breaker. And then either in that video or in a third video, we are going to show installing the receptacle on the other end.